Hey guys, it's Michaela, and you are watching Fun Size Style. So for today's video, I just wanted to sit and chat and update about my bone anchored hearing aid, my Medal Bone Bridge. If you missed my last video where I literally did an entire video talking all about it, I'll link it here in the iCard and in the description box below. I highly recommend that you check out that video first. It's a great video full of information. And it's really the first, it is the first video that I've seen from a fellow Medal Bone Bridge user that actually talks about their device. Um, the device is still so new here in the U.S. But anyways, so I wanted to give a little update about it. I just kind of talked about the device overall and the accessories that I have with it and everything that your kit comes with when you get the device. Um, because when you, like, your insurance covers the device that it comes with more than just the device. It comes with all kinds of accessories. So I chatted all about those, what they do, why it can be useful, and all of the things. So today I just kind of want to talk a little bit about... I promised I would share with you guys everything about this device and my experience with it um, as a user and literally all of it, like the in the downs and everything in between as I get adjusted to this device and using it because it is a lot, a lot different as far as like the device itself. It's different than a traditional hearing aid, um, even though I was only able to use a traditional hearing aid for such a short period of time. So as far as like getting acclimated to the device and tweaking it just so that it's perfect for me has been honestly like quite the journey, more than I thought it would be. To be honest, like not in a bad way. Um, it's just different than a hearing aid, like a hearing aid, a traditional hearing aid. You get the settings inputted to your device and you put it in your ear and you're able to hear, which is great. <laughs> but the, for the Metal Bone Bridge, and I believe just like, well, yeah, specifically the Metal Bone Bridge, um, there's a little bit of an extra step that's involved in um, getting this to fit perfectly for each individual user. So I wanted to share a little bit about my experience several months into using it and kind of what I'm alluding to here. As I talked about in the original video, I'll take it out for a second um, so you can see this. So obviously this is my device. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's perfect. Overall, like it has been really great. Sound quality is great. The original video that I did talking about like the device and the accessories, I feel like I only mentioned the hearing part just a little bit. Obviously like the main part and the accessories are just a bonus but I think part of that too was because I had so many things to show you I wanted to fit it all in one video. But I've been using this device for a few months now and I absolutely love it and I truly, it is so, it just makes me happy when I wear it. Like I mentioned time and time again, I'm not completely deaf. I have full hearing in my left ear and very, 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 very little uh, in my right. And so I am able to carry a conversation in most environments perfectly fine without a hearing. But there are certain environments and certain people's tones and certain aspects that I really, really struggle. As I mentioned also before, hearing loss is one of those um, struggles or challenges that you can't see. Like, when I sit here and film a video, I'm alone in my bedroom and you don't see me have a conversation with somebody. You guys don't get that opportunity to see that aspect of my life on a daily basis in different environments and such. And yes, I've done interviews with people here on my channel. I've had guests and things. When I do those, they're literally sitting either right next to me or they're on a video call and I can just turn the volume up. So again, it's just one of those. It's really unique because obviously all my own health conditions do pretty much see. Like obviously you see my scoliosis, you see osteoarthritis imperfecta. Like they're obviously in my wheelchair and like those are obviously very visible things, but hearing loss, one of those challenges that I face and have faced for many years that you can't see. And those 
around me can't see. I and mean, only those who spend a great deal of time with me for long periods of time um, would know that I struggle. It's really interesting because a lot of my friends, like when I got the device, uh, wow, I didn't know that you struggled with hearing loss. And a lot of times it's because they only see me for a brief time or again, in a specific environment. If you spend long amounts of time with me in many different settings outside of my home, um, and even in my home, like if you're in the other room, I'm probably not going to be able to hear you, or I'll hear you and I won't be able to understand what you said. So um, that's just kind of another little backstory and kind of giving you a picture of my hearing loss uh, that I can describe what it's like now and convincing from my medical team as well um, to convince me to get one of these devices and it's because I thought like obviously I don't have the worst case scenario in terms of hearing loss so I thought like why do I need one of these I'm able to carry a conversation just fine without struggle like day to day I'm able to function you know there are certain times again in certain environments and I get really frustrated because like you know I'm 23 and I shouldn't have to struggle to hear even if it's certain environments like I deserve to experience life the fullest and I had to be reminded of that by them and you don't realize like what a big role hearing plays in your life so you don't have it or you lose most of it or you lose some of it whatever the circumstances are there are, and I say that time again whenever I talk about my hearing loss. There's so many aspects of my life that I already struggle in, that I can't fix, that I can't do anything about, that my medical team can't fix for me, that they don't have treatment for me. And so if I can do something to eliminate a struggle, I'm going to do that. And so that was just a really great, just some great perspectives that my team gave me and um, that really convinced me to get one of these and know that just because my circumstance isn't the worst case scenario, you do have to meet a certain threshold and I'm way beyond that. I'm way beyond that threshold. My hearing loss is severe and so I had to be severe enough to get one of these devices and I meet that goal, let me tell you. Yeah, I just so looking back at where I was compared to where I am now several months into using this device, it, it, I'm to the point, I'm just now starting to get to a point where I barely remember life without it. Um, it's been such a gift and even just like little things like background noise and just little, just little sounds you hear throughout the day. I can't even begin to give examples because there's so many, like being able to hear the refrigerator running, able to hear certain types of birds outside. And like, again, it wasn't that I could hear birds outside. I heard them, but maybe there were, I noticed like there were certain ones that I didn't hear or didn't notice. And um, one thing that really, I think also the one thing that like scared me the most about my hearing loss is the way that my hearing loss is. There are certain times like I would be coming like behind me and I like literally would not hear them behind me. Like my mom would be like, Michael, there's a car coming and like I literally would not hear it. So um, just like that safety or like hear it till it's like a lot closer. So just that like, safety aspect of it, especially when I'm out in the community has been like such a godsend for me. And um, just like the little sound that I'm able to um, hear now and just like how important um, it is to keep that part of your brain stimulated and used and all of that. Like, in fact, there's a lot of studies that show people with hearing loss are at greater risk for like dementia and stuff. So obviously I'm so young and I don't want to even think about that. So just like, you again, you don't realize how much hearing plays in your you know, your short-term health, like your mental health, and then like your long-term health. And, and where I'm at now, like I'm just able to hear so much more. And I'm able to, exp I just feel like I'm able to experience life more fully. With this device, I can't, I've talked about this a little bit on my Instagram stories. I've struggled to put it into words because like I said, I'm not completely deaf, but I'm, 
deaf enough to the point where like I notice a huge difference in my life and the things that I'm able to participate in, conversations I'm able to participate in in certain places and just the joy that I feel instead of discouragement of being able to hear those things and participate and again for me like maybe their only health struggle that they have or physical struggle that they have I'm not talking like financial like really I'm talking like just physical struggle like for a lot of people maybe their only thing is hearing loss for me and not that that's not important like it's equally as important but for me I have again it comes back to I have so many areas of my life that I struggle and that, that I that there's no treatment for there's no fix for and there's something and it's something that I was able to do something about I took that opportunity and I never gave up and I knew that there was something out there for me and I finally found that and so I have an area of my life that I don't have to struggle as much it, it should like I can't even begin to describe it and I'm gonna be doing a Q&A but one question that I did want to answer because it goes into kind of segueing to the next point of my experience is like first few months of using this and the ups and the downs and someone asked me like along the lines of like are there still things you can't hear or like do you still miss out on things and I will say this the average person like who doesn't have clinical hearing loss like we all miss out on things sometimes like every single person who doesn't even have hearing loss says like one time like what did you say it could be because we're so focused in on what we're doing or again just maybe we're talking to somebody else at the same time so we all say what we're all there's so much going on around us we live in such a busy chaotic hustle world we all say like what was that or like what did you say because like we either again we're paying attention or there's a lot going on so yeah I still say what sometimes because just like somebody without hearing loss but it is not to the extent that I did before and I'm able to not have to do that like even my friends and family are commenting like wow I noticed like you don't have to say what in like as much or at all in most scenarios now but obviously it it doesn't pick up everything man-made device it doesn't even have anything to do with the device like again even people without hearing loss still say what sometimes because again we're not paying attention or there's a lot going on and we're not tuned in to what's going on around us so yes and no like i said it's not perfect and but it's like literally 99 percent perfect and I'm not just saying that because I, whatever, I'm literally saying that because that's how it's been for me and it is literally 99% perfect. I will say, like, as much as I love this device, just take care of your hearing. It is a man-made device and I just hope, especially along the lines of having osteogenesis and perfecta, I hope that, the, that my skull will hold these screws for the duration of my lifetime and that is something that I... I think I will always worry about in the back of my mind for the rest of my day but it's also that I have to I have to put that fear aside of that potential happening because then I won't be able to enjoy it I won't be able to live in the moment of hey right now in this moment I'm able to hear right now in this moment with this device I'm able to not struggle and so for today for this season I'm going to enjoy it and not worry about the what ifs of this device um, for the future. I always want to tell you guys like take care of your hearing um, Take care of your ears like they're so important and you guys know like from my years of struggle um, I had doctors who didn't know how to help me and kept pushing me on to someone else I've had to tell me that this was my new norm it didn't have to be that way um, And so my situation was really unique because it wasn't a sense of like I wasn't taking care of myself. I was trying. It was the healthcare system that failed throughout childhood with the specific issue. So I just always want to say that because I don't want people to think, well, there's these devices out here. So if something happens to me, oh, well, I'll just blare my music so loud in my head. Because if I lose my hearing someday, there's devices out there to fix it. Devices aren't perfect. So treasure what you have. Treasure uh, the, the gift that God has given you of being able to hear and take care of that to the best of your ability because you don't realize like I will die on that hill 
by saying you don't realize like how important something so small seems or is and how much it matters. So that's that. Um, but I just wanted to share like truly it feels like my world has opened up. It's just one of these things where if you don't struggle with it you can't put it into words but it truly feels like my world has opened and it's just the best feeling and um, I also feel a sense of pride and I don't mean like in full pride look at me compared to someone else like you don't want like that kind of pride like that's very sinful pride but like pride in the fact that like my, I know myself better than anyone except God of course knew what I want and I never gave up after, after doctor appointment after appointment I cannot even tell you guys how many appointments throughout my childhood I went for this problem. I, I never gave up. And now I get to live in this moment every single day of experiencing what I worked so hard for to get this and be able to improve my quality of life. I get to live in that joy every single day of having this device and I hope and I pray that that bliss of how much this device means to me and I hope that I never take that for granted. I hope that in 10 years from now, I hope that I never take that for granted and I never lose the sense of joy that I have and the gratitude that I have for this device. I hope that I never take that for granted and I hope that I never forget all that I went through to be able to have this for so many years. And so, like I said in that video about like the device itself, I realized I never actually talked about like what this has been like for me to be able to hear fully again after like seven years and, and enjoying life louder with more sounds it is the coolest feeling and it's kind of how my life is with new sounds and being able to carry on conversations and just live daily life um, being able to hear fully it's it's a whole new life and I'm taking in every moment with this new lease on life and I'm just really grateful. Being able to hear adds a whole new level of experience to life, I don't know. But in the same way, I also, I promised I would share all of, all of my thoughts about this device and everything that, you know, we have to do uh, to get this device good for me and uh, work well for me. Um, so one of the things I talked about in my video with the metal bone bridge, like the original, just like introducing the device to you and what it is and what, how it works and all the things. I talked about how the device is attached by a magnet, so um, obviously I had the implant surgically inserted and the internal piece has a magnet and then this external piece also has a magnet. So for the external piece, there are six different magnet strengths and the magnet strengths are, there's one through six, one being the least strong, six being the strongest. Um, there are so many factors to what goes into how your audiologist picks what magnet strength works for you. A lot of it is trial and error, things like your weight, your skin thickness, your hair thickness, like so much of it goes into play of what magnet strength works for you. And they had told me this, like, obviously, in the beginning. The magnet strength I got, like, that she picked for me was perfect. It just seemed to work really well. It was sticking well, um, everything, because it's a really fine line of you don't want the magnet strength to be too strong because it can cause skin scalp damage and it can cause headaches and all kinds of things, which I'll get into. Um, but you also don't want it to be too weak, like the strength of the magnet to be too weak as to where the magnet is constantly falling off. Um, and so about a month after my activation day, I like it started falling off all the time, like constant, like to the point where the like a week or two before my follow up, I couldn't even like wear it because it was just constantly falling off. So I was worried that I was gonna lose it. And so um, I originally started out at a three. That was what I was given on my activation day. And then after that started happening, at my next appointment, I got moved up to a four. So that was working great. And then about a month ago, it scared me half to death because I started getting pain um, while wearing the device. 
and like really really bad headache like pretty bad headaches and I don't I don't get headaches so well I shouldn't say ever like I mean I've had a headache but I just don't get headaches really so I knew that like I'm like oh my gosh like something was up with the device and another aspect that plays into this is after surgery like I guess this area of surgery whatever takes a really long time for the swelling to go down so when the swelling goes down that also affects the need for the magnet strength um, which, I mean, I thought in the back of my mind, but the first thing that came to my mind was that the internal piece that was inserted surgically, like, the screws were, like, my, like I was just getting headaches and headaches and more headaches. I took the device out, the external processor, and messaged my team, and they were like, yeah, it's probably your magnet strength, like, you'll need to come in and, like, get a new one. On that same day, I happened to have a post-op equipment from my surgeons, with my surgeons. I was able to see my surgeon and my audio audiologist on the same day. And going into that appointment, I was like, terrified. With this journey, like, with everything that I've been through, with this journey, obviously my number one fear, and not like fear for my surgeon, but I guess concern, like, fear, but concern for her too was, um, obviously there are other people with osteogenesis and Perfecto who have the metal bone bridge, but Everyone with a Y is different, and so even going into surgery, our number one concern was that, like, would my skull be strong enough to be able to hold the hardware needed to hold the device in place? We knew we wanted to try. We knew that it could be a possibility, which is why I had the surgery in the first place. But going into that appointment, when I started getting these headaches, I was absolutely terrified because with everything that I've gone through with this journey, I thought, oh my gosh, like the screws are loose, I'm gonna need more surgery, or worst case scenario, I'm gonna need the device taken out and all of this will be for nothing. And I was just like going through all the worst case scenarios, but you have to under understand like this has been a seven year journey, like well, more than that, eight year journey. It's hard not to go through the worst case scenario, especially when you've been through that in certain aspects of your life. Like this device means so much to me and it's given me so much like the thought of something going wrong with it and having it taken away like scared me to, to death. Going into that appointment I was absolutely terrified. My surgeon checked it out and I am healing well externally and like what I was describing like she seemed to not be like too concerned about it. I think also what scared me is it took a really long time for the headaches to go away once I took the device out like I thought once I took the device out the headaches, headaches would go away immediately and they didn't. Then I went to my audiologist and got a lesser strength magnet. So I started out at a three, had to get moved up to a four, and then went back down to a three. And I seem to be doing okay with that now. It was scary though. Like, I was legitimately scared just because of everything that I went through. Up until then, like everything with this device has gone so smoothly and to so perfect and I thought to myself like oh my gosh like this must be too good to be true like with everything that I've gone through throughout my life and with this journey in specific like I was literally waiting for something to go wrong just because it has for me for so long so when I started getting those headaches I went to the spiral of thoughts I seem to be doing okay and uh yeah so all of that to say, like, my point to that was, like, a magnet strength is just trial and error. And as your body heals from the surgery. So, um, like I said, I'm back down to a three and I'm doing a lot better. No more headaches, um, stuff like that. And not to say that it couldn't change again in the future. I could go down to a one. Like, it's just the magnet strength is a complete trial and error. And like I said, I haven't even had this device for six months yet. A lot could still change in terms of needs for magnet strength and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but if I do end up getting headaches and we'll try it too. And then if I still get headaches, we'll do imaging to make sure that the device is in place. And obviously also too, um, if you don't have osteogenesis imperfecta, this isn't something like the implant coming loose that you'll really have to worry about. Obviously. I'm sure that's an associated risk listed for the surgery because I have to say that. But for people without OI, I would this is probably not a general risk. So 
obviously you talk to your provider about that, but um, yeah, but experiencing all that and the severe headaches and pain, it just really put me in a place of like realizing like just to get how grateful I am, however long I get to have this device um, and, and it is sustainable for me, um, but I also can't imagine like having this taken away from me and that fear of my school potentially not being able to hold the device someday like does scare me, but I can't live in that fear because of something that is seems too good. I'm going to enjoy that good right now and you know I also believe that God would not have brought me through this whole journey. Like I've only documented a portion of my hearing loss journey. Like this goes back into my childhood. Like he would not have brought me through all this um, in order to take away that joy. So I firmly believe that and no matter what like gosh forbid something happens one day the screw came loose in the implant and I had to have more surgery. Like, he is still good, and his goodness is not founded in my circumstances. He is still good, even when my circumstances are not. It was just a huge scare for me. Um, and honestly, even my surgeon was like, like, that's a concern that she shares with me, too, um, because she is so knowledgeable about osteo osteogenesis and perfecta, and she, like, is completely honest with me that it is a possibility one day. Uh, you just, you don't know, and even though there are many people who have a bone anchored hearing aid with osteogenesis superfecta, there's not a lot in some ways, like, and I'm not even talking about the metal bone bridge at this point, like, bone anchored hearing aids that people with OI have, and so, um, but there are still, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, OI is rare in itself, and then OI with a bone anchored hearing aid, I would feel like it's even more rare. I do know like two others, but they have different bone anchored hearing aids than me. But the one friend that I have, this person has had it for a really long time, so that gives me hope. But I did just want to share that scare and that that we had, um, and it just was like, oh my gosh, I'm only a few months post-op, which didn't help either, like that just spiraled me. It's a, like I said, it's a fear of that. I will always have, but I also have to give it to God and know that, like, just enjoy it for as long as I can and believe that this will last me a lifetime, but I did just want to share, um, scare and that fear that I have, and I think because of what I've went through and what I've gone through in similar situations, it will always be with me to some extent, but it won't stop me from enjoying the gift that I have right now of using it and experiencing life to the fullest with it. So, yeah, so there's a little bit about my curing experience and then um, the big scare that we had. Hopefully um, the headaches stay. We won't need to do imaging uh, to see if it's in place, but so far so good and I'm back, back in curing mode. So it feels good. I had to take like a two, it was uh, two weeks before my appointment that I started getting headaches. So it just worked out in timing wise. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about too is this was like in the very, the last thing that I want to talk about, in the very beginning stages of getting the device, so obviously many of you saw my activation day video, but then along with, I had, an, so activation day was in February, and then I had a follow up at the end of March, and then I went again in June, again, uh, no, I went in Feb Mar March and June, I guess, um, but each of those times, I feel like there's one other time, I don't know. But each of those times, um, I had it, like, turned up a little bit more and more. So now I'm, like, pretty much, um, at the max that I need in terms of volume and, um, just, like, adjusting the settings so that I can hear fully. Um, also, too, know that, like, adjustment for a bone anchored hearing aid is a lot easier and a lot different than a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant, boom, I would probably say for people who have cochlear implants, a lot of times the hearing loss is a lot worse, and so, um, being how to use a cochlear implant and, like, getting used to life with that and the stimulation with that is a lot different than a bone, bone and good hearing aid. So with a cochlear implant, you have to go through, I think it's called, like, auditory rehab. I didn't have to do all that because it's just different with the type of hearing loss that I have. I have conductive hearing loss, not sensorial neural so getting used to a bone and good hearing aid is like the same as a traditional hearing aid putting it in and start hearing but a cochlear impl implant is a lot different 
than that, and there's a lot of links you can look up to learn more about that. But, um, so auditory rehab is not really necessary for the most part for somebody with conductive hearing loss who uses a bone and good hearing aid or even traditional hearing aids. Each time I've gotten it, like, turned up a little bit, so now I'm, like, to the point where I'm at, like, the max that I need, and so it's really cool because on activation day, like, obviously they set it to, like, a certain thing, and then each time, like, as you get more and more used to it, they turn it up till you're at the point that I'm at now of maximum volume or sound needed, and so it's crazy because on activation day, I thought it was incredible, and then each time I've gotten it turned up, um, it's just gotten better because obviously it's gotten louder and just better. A lot of adjustments uh, needed to be made throughout the journey. Uh, magnet strength, volumes, stuff like that. But I think I'm finally at a more stable place. I always I hope so. Um, the first few months with this device. It's just working out the kinks and really getting it customized to you. Like that's what it's all about. Like. Obviously, in this case, getting it custom to me. There's just, it's a lot different ball game, I would say, than not. Like, it's different, but it's not, like, compared to a traditional hearing aid, because obviously you don't have, like, the magnet strength thing, but there's, like, tuning and stuff. You gotta, like, fine tune it with the sound, too, with the tr traditional hearing aid, but I didn't have the traditional hearing aid long enough to really be able to experience that part of it. We just had a lot of tweaks and settings and magnet strengths to swap out. Lots of trial and error to um, make it. But again, I haven't even had this device six months yet. This, it's just all part of the process. And none of this was really unexpected. Like, it's just, I knew this part was going to be part of the process. I'm at a more stable place now and just really getting to enjoy um, this device each and every day. Um, so, I just wanted to do a little update video of the adjustments and getting acclimated to this device, what that has been like, the ups and the downs. It's been a emotional roller coaster, a really high highs and really low lows. Uh, but now we're back at a high high, so I hope it stays that way. Um, but I have a lot of other videos I'm going to be doing about my um, metal bone bridge and things I want to share about it. So I have a lot of other videos about it coming soon. So let me know if you like these. I hope you do, because I'm going to be sharing about it anyway because I love this device and so I want to I want to share what brings me joy and this is one of those things that bring me joy and I love educating about stuff like this. Like honestly, I'm the only one that I've seen on YouTube from a user experience share what share videos about this. So it's been really great for me but thank you guys for sharing in this joy with me and for praying for me and sharing in the joy of me getting to experience this new Lease on Life. I will see you in my next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye!